Oh, I hope you had a good time seeing that. Uh, Nico <coughs> dancing like a like a sickened fool that he is. Hey, what's up, everybody? Nico the Legend here. We're here for another Nico show episode. Look at that. I'm behind another two weeks. I'm really bad at this. It seems like I'm not enjoying it, but I got a justifiable reason of why I'm such a screw-up. And it's because, as you can tell, I'm a little... <coughs> I'm a little nasally right now still, because I'm still getting... I'm in the final stages of getting over a sinus infection. That's right, you heard it here. All last week, I had a sinus infection, and it fucking sucked. So, uh, I am now getting over it. Well, I've been kind of getting over it for the past, like, like few days, uh, more or less. Um... Oh God! Red Dead Online beta launch dates and new details announced. God damn it! Sorry, <laughs> I got I got one of my pages up already with the news, and it, I can see stuff on the side, talking about other games. So anyway, yeah, I got over a sinus infection. Uh, it's or I'm getting over it. I got medication. I went to go see a doctor after about three days of suffering and dying, and then I've had to call out of work a couple times. I had to show up for work while dying and suffering. It wasn't a pretty sight. It was a pretty horrible sinus infection. I get a sinus infection like once or twice every year. So now I don't have to hold my nose to sound nasally. Uh, the, the sinus infection does it for me. Isn't that great? Now all the women can always think I sound really nerdy on the voice. They're like, can you do a nerdy voice for me on the phone? I'm already doing it, baby. Oh my God, I would have never thought. I don't know what I'm talking about right now. So yeah. Apologies guys. I hate apologizing over and over about this stuff, but yeah, it's been about a couple weeks and the sinus infection really did not make it uh, Did not make my life any easier So that's why I didn't stream for a good four days in a row or five days or like almost a whole week um, So I do apologize about that. I'm actually gonna get rid of this So but I hope everybody's doing okay, like I said, welcome to the Nico show. We're on episode 35 And uh we got so much to talk about today. So much goodness. Uh, I know last time we talked... I know we talked a good share last time. Uh, it was a two-hour special. <coughs> we had some AMA and then uh, also, uh, you know, at the last hour, the first hour, we talked about gaming news. And we had quite a bit to catch up to, to do. And then we, uh, before that, in our Nico show episode, we talked about uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. And uh, that we, that's the whole stream was based upon. We just w talked all about that. And then, uh, yeah, so we'll get right into the segment of what games I'm playing right now. I'm playing Red Dead Redemption 2! Uh, for, and I have for the past week now. And the game is awesome, amazing, and I, I'm really happy about it. And I, you know, a lot of people probably didn't like the game because it's like, Oh, it's boring. Oh, the graphics aren't that good. Oh, this and that. Sometimes you wonder if your cat's truly an idiot. Anyway, so despite all those people complaining about stuff like that, whatever, I, I go in with you know with an open mind. I don't just shut it out because I really enjoyed the first Red Dead Redemption. Granted, I never beat it because it's really long and big, and this game is no exception. It's probably ten times bigger than the other one. But I'm having a blast playing this game. You guys can check out my streams and stuff on Twitch, uh, seeing how much fun I've been having, or check out my Xbox Live clips. Just look up Loot the Wolf one word and you'll find that I'm having a blast. And there's some seriously cool shit in that game. Um, unfortunately, I wish, you know, I had to get it for a console. So I don't have the best version. I have vanilla Xbox. I don't have an Xbox One X or a PS4 Pro. So I'm, I'm playing the worst version of it, sadly. But I'm still enjoying it despite uh, some graphical things that were a little low res. But I understand that they had to optimize it the best they could to fit all those, those specs. Uh, but don't worry, there'll be a PC coming out eventually, PC version coming out eventually, and I'll be glad to own that right from the get-go. I don't care how many hours I spent on the console version, I'm getting this game on PC, and it's going to be amazing. And we haven't even tapped into Red Dead Online, so which we're going to be talking about in this in this uh, this episode because it just hit me <coughs> with that news. Uh, so, yeah, fantastic game so far. Like I said, you can really tell that these guys at, at Rockstar put a lot of hours into this game. And you've, you've seen the articles. Working over 100-hour work shifts per week, overtime, 
just trying to get this shit done. It's a fantastic game. I really enjoy it. All my friends really enjoy it. Uh, my brother really enjoys it. So, I mean, and he's got an Xbox One X and he's playing it on, on it. And he said it's just mind-blowing looking. It's just really amazing looking. So, yeah, I can only imagine. But that, you know, I was, like I said, I'm still having a good time. And it's going to take me a while to beat this game. But it's going to last me a long time. Because, you know, eventually when PC comes out, I'll have two versions of the game. So if I have people that want to play with me online on the Xbox, I can. And then on the PlayStation, I can't. Maybe, maybe their possibility will be cross-play. Maybe. I don't know how Rockstar would do that. But that would be freaking awesome. Uh, that would be amazing. Um, just do it like Gears of War 4. Uh, PC players uh, are always teamed up with Xbox players when they're playing matchmaking. But Xbox players have the option to shut off crossplay. So we could do it like that. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just simple game design. That's quality of life stuff right there. But anyway, uh, that's what I'm mainly playing right now. I got Okami HD. Coming in the mail, we're going to be streaming that quite a bit. Never played that game, but it looked fucking awesome. Uh, and it's t I got it for $10 on eBay. And then I just ordered yesterday. I know people are going to cringe at this, but I don't care because I like the game. So you don't have to like it. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5 uh, HD uh, Remix for $15 on eBay. That's coming in the mail. Um, not, not for a while since I ordered it yesterday, but... Okami HD will be coming today or tomorrow, so yeah, we might be able to might be able to play that tomorrow on the stream. I wouldn't mind doing a big stream for that. Um, funny thing is, is that uh, I, I was looking at my game shelf and at my PS4 games. And I'm like, man, I really need to beat Dragon Quest XI. And I technically I did beat the game. I had credits rolling and everything, but it wasn't the true ending. And the true ending is literally like the end game content and it adds like another 30 plus hours to the game. It's ridiculous. I meant 98 hours in the game. I, I spent as much hours as I did for Persona 5. And you know how long that game can be. Holy shit. So I was kind of wanting, my point is I was kind of wanting to do a stream, uh, a long Dragon Quest stream. I don't care. And try to beat the game today. See if I can beat it in a long stream. Um. I think I, I, I might be ready to beat it. I, I just like playing that game so much trying to get the end game gear. I, I think I'm pretty decked out though <clears throat> for the most part. So yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, like I said, uh, life stuff. Like I said, get it over a science infection. Still training my client in personal training. That's still going good. Uh, got my first paycheck for personal training. It wasn't, it was you know, a little small, a little small, but you know, not bad on the side money. You know, I can't complain. And, you know, it was only for, like, two sessions anyway, so it's not going to be that much. But the next time will be good. Next time will be a little bit better. But, you know what? Ex any extra money can go a long way, so I'm happy about that. Uh, Super Smash Brothers coming out soon. Actually, I think my next uh, personal training paycheck will be used on Smash. <coughs> you know what? I would not mind getting the special edition version of that game, even though I already have uh, an adapter and a, and a Smash con GameCube controller fuck i mean why not i don't know this game i'm gonna be streaming and playing like all the freaking time uh it's gonna be a sure as fun sure as shit fun game and it's it's gonna be a ton of fun i can't wait so look out for that premiere stream it's gonna happen i'm gonna try to stay up pretty late playing it or at least if i don't stay up too late i'm gonna stay up the, <clears throat> i'm gonna be playing it a lot the next day and streaming it gotta unlock all those characters and got to get them unlocked for a Smash Brothers tournament I'm doing with my friends that I haven't told anybody but two people about. So I better get on it. But anyway, folks, that's enough about that, about me stuff and game stuff. Uh, sorry if I sound, like I said, some na little nasally. Uh, I took my medication this morning, you know, my, my four different kinds of drugs to get this shit out of my system. So, um... Like I said, we got a lot to talk about today. And all these articles... Okay, IGN, like I said, I... <sighs> they... They sometimes have decent articles that you can be like, Oh, this is pretty good game news. But a lot of the times, it's like... <sighs> but today, they surprised me again. So they have really good articles today to talk about. And I'm excited about that. So, uh, actually, we're going to talk about this one first. This was like out of nowhere 
So, this one will be about Red Dead Redemption Online Beta. Woo -woo, which I'm actually going to post uh, in my Discord server right now. So, let's see here. I'm going to tag Riley in it. Because she... That'd be important for her. All right. Anyway, sorry. Let's get back to that. <coughs> oh, 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 come on. Are you fucking serious? I'm already triggered. So, sorry. Uh, Red Dead Online beta launch dates and new details announced. The beta begins tomorrow for Ultimate Edition owners. Pay to win. So, it begins tomorrow for Ultimate Edition owners and for everyone by the end of the week. Okay, let me tell you something. I better have this fucking weekend off. I think I might. <gasps> I think I do have this weekend off. Hell yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm going to be streaming all the time. Anyway, uh, Red Dead Online's beta period will begin in a limited capacity tomorrow, 27th, becoming available to all players on Friday, November 30th. Rockstar has announced that the beta will, release, will be released in stages, adding more and more players throughout the week. Tuesday, all Red Dead Ultimate Edition owners. Wednesday, all players who have Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, on October 26th, according to our data. Oh, really? All players who have Red Dead 2 between October 26th... To, oh, the 29th. Oh, wait. Nope, that's definitely not me. Uh, so I'm, I, I'm this motherfucker. I'm this. I'm the last. All players who own it. So, uh, you'll be able to access the beta from the title screen. If you're the earliest stage, access will begin, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they've made it clear that its beta period is for testing rather than a demo saying that it will help deal with the inevitable turbulence of launching any online experience of this size and scale. Yes, they know. They admit that how fucked up it's going to be when it comes out, when the full release comes out, that it's going to be buggy and all that, you know, or whatever you want to call it, you know. That's why it's good to do this beta to at least eliminate as much as you can. Other than that, yeah, prepare for a shitstorm. Grand Theft Auto Online is, is still getting updated, so it's it's going to take a long time. Uh, let's see. Uh, it also asks the community to report and fix problems, share ideas, and assist in shaping the future of the full online experience. As for what Red Dead Online will actually be, that mystery is ongoing, but Rockstar offers a, a couple of new details. Ooh, juicy. Players will create and customize their own character. What, what the hell is this customized shit? They can't spell customize right? Why did he put an S instead of a Z? Okay, hold on a second. Oh! Oh! Ah! Spoilers. All right, I have to do this. I'm sorry. This is a me thing. So. No, not that. That. Customize first customize. Is really? Really? Oh my gosh. I've noticed this in, in recent articles on, on IGN that they've been doing this shit. They've been spelling it <clears throat> like like different. <laughs> Just changing that one letter, but whatever. And tailor their abilities. You can play solo, but also form or join posses that allow up for the seven players in a group. Posses will seemingly also own their own camps. Hell yeah. That's where you'll get up to. The press release says players can head out hunting or fishing. Visit bustling towns, battle enemy gains, and attack their hideouts, hunt for treasure, take on missions, and interact with familiar characters from across the five states, or fight against other outlaws and both spontaneous skirmishes and pitch set peace battles, compete with other players, or hold posses in open world challenges, and much more. Oh, yeah! Oh, feel the muscles! That's fucking awesome! Holy crap! It's literally, it's probably what you could be doing in the single player. Just with some online mechanics to it. Having posses fucking up some hideouts. But we didn't find out about anything about uh, real estate stuff. But I'm sure if it's like Red Dead Online, it will be it will have real estate. Um, I don't see why not, you know? Because that's like going to be a big deal if you have a posse or a gang. You're going to... I mean, hideouts are technically real estate. So, uh, yeah, that sounds freaking awesome. I'm glad. I'm glad that they're doing it right. I remember I, I saw rumor, I, I read rumors about a Battle Royale take on the game coming out, which will probably be badass because uh, I'm pretty sure Rockstar will do well. But that might be a game mode that will be released way later because they're just trying to get 
this thing going, period. Just the online part, just so people can just go in and just do a few things good here and there. There's nothing wrong with that. And then expand further and beyond. To infinity and beyond, Buzz Lightyear. Thank you. So that's pretty exciting for you guys. All right, so the next one. I just wanted to talk about that uh, because it just blew my mind. And I'm glad I'm glad that's coming out still in November. It's not delayed or anything. So good job, Rockstar. You guys are being smart with your marketing. And trust me, when Red Dead Online officially releases, there will be a ton of more, a ton more sales for this game. I mean, this game sold seven or made seven hundred twenty-five million dollars in a weekend release, which is uh, one hundred twenty-five million dollars away from how much Grand Theft Auto V made on release weekend. And that was back then, by the way. That was like back in two thousand thirteen or twelve or something. That's pretty insane. And Black Ops 4 made $500 million in its opening weekend. And that's still pretty insane. <clears throat> Red Dead Redemption 2 had the second largest entertainment release of all time. Number one was GTA 5. So take that, Hollywood. Take that. All right, so the next one. All right, fun stuff. Super fun stuff today. I'm excited. All right, E.G. Anum Anuma. Anuma. I'm sorry, my friend. Seemingly teases Skyward Sword for Switch. Ah, oh my god, Skyward Sword was so bad. That game had the worst motion controls. And it was just, they showed you where to go every time. It wasn't like, you know, it held your hand. And uh, it was just such a boring world to explore. God, whiny bitches. Whiny bitches. <laughs> just kidding that's just your opinion and opinions are fine and it's great you know if you don't like it you don't like it i liked it i had a fun time with it but there were some little things that they needed to fix and i'll get to that in a second so the zelda producer eg may have tipped nintendo's hand in regards to the next zelda game heading for switch anoma made an on-stage appearance at the legend of zelda musical concert in osaka japan this weekend during this the appearance he mentioned but did not confirm a potential Switch version of 2011's Skyward Sword, according to Weibo. I know what you're thinking. Skyward Sword for Switch, right? Fans are said to respond with applause, but the producer left everyone hanging with only that tease. Neither An Anuma or anything else that Nintendo has said anything else on the matter. So the statement can hardly be taken as an official announcement of anything. Still, there's a couple of reasons for fans to be optimistic. For starters, Nintendo has already remastered and re-released -re 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 series predecessors. Oki Time, Majora's Miski, Wind Wiki, and Twilighty Princessy over the past seven years. And they're fucking amazing, by the way. Those re-releases, re they do a good job with it. Skyward Sword being the next in order of release and the last main console entry in the series before uh, 2017's Breath of the Wild, which debuted on Switch, would seem to put it next in line for a remaster. <coughs> Additionally, Eurogamer... Reports that Nintendo is interested in releasing a Zelda game on Switch every year. Holy shit. Breath of the Wild launched alongside the two console in 2017. And 2018 saw Nintendo port over Wii U spin-off Hyrule Warriors. With a presumed but unannounced Breath of the Wild sequel likely still another year away at minimum, it's plausible that Nintendo is, is slotting in a Skyward Sword rematch for 2019. In fact, Anuma himself teased back in 2016 that a Skyward Sword HD remaster was definitely possible. Hey. Oh, great. Hold on a second. Yeah, kitty. Yeah, it's a bad kitty. Bad kitty. So, what is this? How does this make me feel? Well, like I said, I actually had a pretty decent time with the game. Uh, like I said, I enjoyed the graphics for it. I enjoyed the story. And it was the first Zelda game I have ever beaten. Standing up. Yes, that's right. Because the game on the Wii uses motion controls. And some of you said it was kind of crappy. Uh, only in some aspects. I mean, it's the. I think the only problem I had with it was just trying to hold my sword up. All the way to like channel energy. And they really wanted you to hold it up. They didn't want you to be really lazy. Maybe that's just not the design's fault. Maybe it's just lazy gamers. I don't know. But that was the only time I ever really had a problem with it. But you know what? This was like one of the most interesting and challenging zelda games because of the motion controls and i thought they did a fantastic job with it 
for the most part. Boss battles were super intense. They had some pretty interesting boss battles too. Um, of course, some were a little uh, repetitive or not that exciting because um, especially the... Uh, I can't remember his stupid name. But the giant two-legged walking thing, basically the end boss of the game, that's like the recar the incarnation of Ganondorf, or, you know, evil. Uh, they repeated that boss fight like three times, and it's not fun at all doing it at all. <coughs> Maybe the first time around it, it was interesting, but doing it two or three more times, I, that was just laziness on their part. And, uh, sorry about that. And but Demise himself was pretty freaking awesome boss fight. He was hard, dude. He was a hard boss to fight, um, but he was awesome, and I really dig it. I like uh, I liked the the boss or the villain or the side villain, whatever. Gr Grim Griminer, Grimire, or Grimwire. I don't remember exactly. Gr Grimace, but he was a pretty sinister looking guy. Uh, and you know. There, they did some, like I said, they did some pretty interesting stuff in that game that's never been seen in a Zelda game. Uh, they had a one hub type town, like in Diablo, you have one town that has all your belongings. There, you know, if you don't count the other acts, you know, I mean, it's just basically one hub, one town. Um, they had that in Zelda, where you would buy, purchase, run around, where all the action, where all the, like the dialogue would happen and stuff like that. So there's nothing wrong with that. Um, some people, like I said, some people hated it because they thought it was boring exploring with the bird. Uh, there wasn't that much, like, interesting stuff. I guess they might have compared it too much to Wind Waker, which Wind Waker to me was kind of boring because sailing across the sea and nothing really happening too much. But that's now. At the time back then, that was pretty amazing. So uh, maybe they just didn't put enough, like, in this version in, in Skyward Sword um, because they played it too, too much off of wind waker you know like a like a mirror uh like a reverse image you know it's just if like nowadays we're just like we need stuff to to keep our t attentions at bay and keep us hooked like breath of the wild was a perfect example of doing that <clears throat> don't get me started on breath of the wild that game is amazing ah it was so much fun to play you can still play that game and enjoy the hell out of it so, yeah, this is pretty exciting. I am excited for another Zelda game. More Zelda, the better. I, I don't, I've don't. i never had any problems with any Zelda games besides Zelda 2. And uh, I didn't really play much of Minish Cap and, and Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks. I didn't really care for those Zelda games. Um, but they're, but I never, that's not because they were bad. I just wasn't interested in playing them. But all the Zelda games I did play that I was interested in have been very, very fun. Um, I mean, nothing beats Ocarina of Time. Oh, trigger, trigger, trigger. Or Twilight Princess. Oh, Twilight Princess is so much better than Wind Waker. Anyway, next subject. Ha, 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 ha. Subjective or objective. We'll never know. So. So this is something that uh, took the internet by storm uh, a week ago or maybe a week and a half ago. Diablo 4. Reportedly in development under codename Fenris. Embrace the Darkness. So, do you remember that fun BlizzCon that we all enjoyed with, oh, guess what? We had an awesome announcement for the remastered version of Warcraft 3. Fuck yeah! That was badass! That was awesome! I was super stoked! Then I'm like, man, I can't wait until they show Diablo 4, and it sucked. Instead, we got a port, <coughs> a portable version of Diablo coming out called Diablo Immortals that goes on your phones. And people were like, oh, what do you mean? You never wanted to play Diablo on your phone? Ooh, it's going to be fun. Bleh. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? No. No one asked for a phone. For a fucking Diablo ported version on your phone or whatever you would call that. Brand new entry. Nobody asked for that, Diablo. Blizzard, nobody fucking asked for that. Your marketing campaign was ruined. So... Uh, yeah, you can imagine how everybody else felt. Ten times worse. People were booing. People were leaving the, the press conference when they were talking about it because it was so ridiculous. You know, that is something that you should have done with, like, how Bethesda did it at their con convention for E3. They announced a phone version of their game, Fallout 76, and then, like, oh, wait. Oh, wait. You thought we were done? Elder Scrolls motherfucking 6 teaser trailer announced. What, what? And then that solves everything. 
everything. Same thing with uh, Microsoft. They did it with Gears of War 5. They had it to where, oh, what's this weird phone version of Gears of War? Funko Pop looking shit. I don't know. I don't know. It was weird looking. Then like, boom, Gears of War 5 trailer. How hard, is, how hard was it to do that? But, you know, reports say that they, they, that they had a teaser trailer announced, but they scrapped it a couple weeks before. So, yeah, this is what happens. So, anyway, let's get to the article. Uh, Embrace the Darkness, D4, a mainline entry in the franchise, is reportedly in development under the codename Fenris. In a comprehensive article that interviewed 11 current and former Blizzard employees, Kotaku reported this development. <coughs> Following a canceled second expansion to Diablo 3 that was supposed to follow Reaper of Souls and the cancellation of another project codenamed Hades, many team members began working on Fenris, which sources claim is the current incarnation of Diablo 4. The major pillar for the game and its art direction has reportedly embraced the darkness, reportedly in development since 2016. That's good news. Many who have seen it are optimistic about the direction that it's taking. Though still early in development, the game is expected to be released in 2020 or later. Oh, fuck. God damn it, Blizzard. It's unclear if the game will come to PC first or will be released simultaneously on consoles. Yeah, it better fucking come to PC first, man. PC Master Race. The team has reportedly been deciding if it will keep the isometric camera angle from past Diablo games or use the over-the-shoulder third person. That was experimented with, with in the cancelled Hades. However, recent builds of the game are reportedly isometric. There's a lot of people who felt like E3 got away from what made Diablo Diablo. Yeah, you better fucking believe that. In terms of art style and spell effects, said a current Blizzard employee who claimed the game is aiming to be more like Diablo 2 than its immediate predecessor. <coughs> they want to make this gross, make it dark, remove anything that was considered cartoony in Diablo 3. Make it what people were afraid of in Diablo 2, but modern, says another ploy. A current focus of Fenris is to introduce light MMO elements into the series, taking social inspirations from Destiny. Was speaking about if there would be a strike equivalent in Fenris, Fenris, one player familiar with the project, said, what if we still had a core Diablo game that just happened to have a bunch of people on the map to do other cool stuff? There have been reportedly been plans throughout 2018 to announce the game in January. We're still... They were still full set on. We're doing. We're going to do this right. We're going to have a playable demo, said one source. By the time we hit May, their game wasn't far enough along. Uh, it's normal problems. Things going slower than they'd like. Uh, as to why they canceled the expansion to Diablo 3, the second one, is unclear, though it appears management wasn't confident in the title following its rocky launch in 2012. The move reportedly surprised many within the team that made Reaper Souls, which was met with a highly positive reception in 2014. However, Blizzard itself claims it launch, launches about only only about 50% of its total projects. If Fenris will be one of those projects remains to be seen. The other allegedly canceled project codename was Hades was supposed to take the franchise in a very different direction. It was reportedly Diablo's take on Dark Souls, a gothic difficult dungeon. Ah, no, 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 no. It would act as a departure from the mainline series and many at Blizzard felt it would have ended up being labeled Diablo 4. Yes, allegedly the team's primary project for two years, it was ultimately canceled in 2016 after a rocky development and following the departure of Josh Mosquera, Diablo 3's console lead designer. Okay. <coughs> so, this is a big deal. I'm actually glad that they canceled the project. As much as it probably would have been cool to have uh, a third-person Diablo game, I, I think fans would hate it. At first, they would give it such horrible backlash, but maybe they come to like it later on down the road. But just stick to what you're good at. Don't change it too much. That's like making StarCraft or Warcraft like a like their RTS games first person and making Overwatch like an RTS. You just you shouldn't change game design that much when it's not broken. I'm all for improving game design, but you don't need to go that crazy about it. When it comes to, ch like, changing a perspective to a game changes the whole way it's played. And despite Diablo 3 having a rocky launch and, you know, it's still kind of, you know, it's not the best as it should have been, it's still an enjoyable game. And it's still a Diablo game because of certain things are still left in there. It's still, at its core, a Diablo game. You can't argue that. Now, obviously, aesthetically, it might not be. It might not. It might be the worst thing you've ever seen. And the story is pretty pitiful in vanilla Diablo, but the... The expansion made up for it for the most part and yeah it's just a bad idea to go that far into deep water 
Um, so I'm glad they ex they experimented. I'm glad it was another project and they canceled it. I think that was smart. Um, I mean, that's the same thing with Blizzard canceling their MMO Titan, which was in development for like five years or something and it just wasn't seeing the light of day. It went through development hell. And sometimes that's just what it takes, you know? So it's good that they probably didn't show anything from those canceled projects because people would have been super like pissed off. When you start showing stuff for a game that you're unsure about, it's usually going to end up kind of bad. Sorry, I'm fixing my bra. And it's just not a smart marketing thing. You don't want to give your campaign, your your company uh, more of a disappointment than it already has for its past entry. So you got to really, really put all your resources into this project. So hopefully this is the Diablo 4 we're looking for. Um, so at least we're getting something else besides a goddamn forsaken portable phone fuck game. Pardon my French, but that's just how I feel about it. And uh, and we should be moving forward. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing wrong with being experimentative. But uh, you just gotta be extra careful when you do that. Yeah. You gotta be extra careful. Now, for example, like GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2 has first person mode. So you can switch in and out. But it's an option. It's something you can switch. That's not so bad. Some people probably prefer playing like that. I always play third person because I like seeing my cowboy and stuff. So stuff like that is okay. But when it complete, when you completely change it, yeah, people will get pissed. People will hate that. And we don't want it to be like a Dark Souls dungeon crawling thing. Just stick with your original identity. There's nothing wrong with it, really. You, you made two great games. Diablo 1 and 2 were fantastic fucking games. Diablo 3 was average. Shit in the beginning, but then it turned into a pretty decent game. It's still a little bit above average. So, not that bad of a track record. You didn't pull an EA, okay, with all of its recent games. Okay, you did not pull an EA. By destroying companies and making shit sequels and broken promises. <clears throat> Battlefront 21. <laughs> so, the next one. Yay! That was fun to talk about. I'm having fun. So, um... <clears throat> Let's let's see. This is with a fun one. Super Smash Brothers director talks character process and development. <coughs> so, uh, poor Sakurai. L let me just say this for you, Sakurai. So, for those of you that don't know anything about Smash Brothers, well, or Sakurai, Sakurai is a very very hardworking guy, and it goes to show on how much time he puts into these games. You can really really get a sense of it. And this is a guy who hasn't always made Smash Bros. He's made other HAL games like Kirby and stuff. And when we see this game being made and how much time and effort, which he could have done a cop-out move. He could have done like cash grab, just make the Wii U version on Switch, just call it Super Smash Bros. Switch. He didn't fucking do that. He went the ballsy route. He went the challenging and gruesome route of making a brand new game with on a brand new console with a gazillion things added along with the core stuff we all grow to love and know and you just can just imagine that the guy must be tired out of his mind trying to please us because you know he's got that much honor i understand the honor code especially for japanese people they they have huge honor uh, codes to live up to so this is a guy that really doesn't like the bullshit on stuff like that and this is a guy who listens. This is a guy who understands. This is a guy who's happy on what he makes. And Sakurai said for the Wii U one, he said he wasn't going to make Smash Bros. anymore. He was done. But look at this now. You wait a while. You get out of that mindset, and he's making another one. And this could be the last one, and it's ultimate for a reason. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about the hell he goes through. So, how and why did he choose Ultimate 74 characters? With 74 playable characters, Smash Bros. Ultimate roster is stacked. And that's no fucking joke, by the way. It's almost as much... It's like half of Tenkaichi 3's fighting roster for a Dragon Ball Z game. And series creator uh, Masahiro, Masahiro Sakurai recently spoke with Game Informer about uh, how each one was chosen and developed. Sakurai, who said it is actually a miracle every time Nintendo creates a new Smash Bros. game, Wanted to realize the dream of including all previous fighters. His team did not have... Did that and then some adding 11 new fighters. Sorry. Adding 11 new fighters to the previously used 63. But even that hasn't... But even that hasn't satisfied every Smash fan. You, you never will, Sakurai. Just remember. 
but just do your best. People will respect. It's just because people just love seeing their favorite game characters fighting. There's nothing wrong with that. People are just really excited about it. Um, it's just really awesome. I like. I love it like that. It's great. Right, Kitty? Aww, you stupid Kitty. No, just kidding. Uh, there will... Let's see. Ba, ba, ba. There will be people who feel... Might feel disappointed if fighters that appeared in a previous title are not included. I didn't want any players to feel that way, so we worked really hard to make this happen. But what I learned is that regardless of doing our utmost, no matter how hard we try, no, ma no matter how many fighters we include, there will always be people who feel that way. Continuing, Sakurai explained the team chooses all the characters who will appear in every Smash game right at the beginning of development. No character is ever added or removed after that. There might be... there. That might seem strange considering that... Pokemon Incineroar wasn't even created until after uh, Ultimate's development began. But Sakurai planned for this and purposely left an open slot on the roster for a Pokemon knowing that Nintendo was working on a new game. In choosing the character, Sakurai weighs the need to balance the roster against what characters fans vote for on Smash Bros. Fighter Ballot. After that, it's a matter of figuring out how to make those characters and their stages feel genuine. I got a kitty in my lap. Oh, he's super cute. Super cute kitty. You might not expect it, but just reproducing the original work does not come out like it should, said Sakurai. By emphasizing exaggerations, we are able to create elements in a way uh, where having something realistic and comical does not look awkward. And being knowledgeable to an extent about each character is a must. There, there are also times where the staff go deep into the original work and add even better elements. Sakurai said he felt speechless after seeing fans' reaction to Ultimate's character unveils. But his goal isn't to surprise fans. Piranha Plant nonetheless came as a surprise inclusion. But Sakurai chose it not for the wow factor. Rather, I believe it's important to have a good balance uh, as a game. In the past titles in the series, Mr. Game & Watch and Rob and Duck Hunt Dog were some of the examples we offered outside of people's typical expectations, he explained. However, if we don't have these types of fighters and we only had typical hero, her heroine type fighters in the lineup, there's not much difference. It's probably not very interesting, correct? Yes. So... Um, yeah, it's a very, very, uh, it's, it's hard to balance out, a, like, a character schedule like that in a roster. There's so many Nintendo characters, it's like, how do you pick? And, yeah, it's not easy. Obviously, having a Smash ballot really helps. Like, no joke, it really does help. And, of course, some of the characters I'm sure they experienced with probably didn't end up making the list. Um, for example, like, Shovel Knight, uh, is one of them that I was sad about that didn't make the list because Shovel Knight, I think, would have been great. But there is a reason they made him an assistance trophy. Same thing with Waluigi. He's an assistance trophy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get it, Waluigi fans. Um, <clears throat> so there's there's definitely a lot of trial and error. There have been inclusions that I am very happy about, like Ken, the Belmonts, King K. Rule, Ridley, Dark Samus, like... Young Link, you know, like, oh my gosh, Daisy. There are so many characters that they have included that overlaps the things that are missing. Um, and I'm super stoked for this game. I can't wait, I think. we're gonna be, And then the DLC characters are going to be definitely fun to see. And Piranha Plant, it was just a nice little bonus. A nice little incentive to have people wanting to get the game. Um, and then there's five new characters that will be coming uh, along with five new stages. So it's, it's going to be great. I mean... I think it, this is the perfect way to do it. They're being it smart about it. And they're not just adding characters. You can't forget that they're adding uh, a brand new story mode, new a new collectible spirit system, which is like collecting cards and stuff, but you know, without there's no cards in it, but it's like that collective type approach to it. You're like, gotta, gotta catch them all, or catching all Pokemon or something. They have a huge, huge spirit system that they talked about in the last Direct, uh, Nintendo Direct or Smash Direct. And... Yeah, they're not playing around. They are super, super amped to this game. It's going to be a perfect game. I already know it. I can't wait to play it. I can't wait to stream it. I have off four days in a row to play it, get good at it, play it online, get triggered, play with friends, get triggered, and then to play story mode, get triggered. <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be great. And they're doing it right. I mean, before, they would they would have just gave, given you all the characters. In the Wii U version, they gave you all the characters. There was really no unlockable characters just DLC, but this time around, they have you start out with all the characters from the original Smash, and you work your way up. 
by just playing the game you unlock characters which i can't wait because some games don't have that anymore uh, gears of war 4 ah oh, jesus terrible so good job sakurai i appreciate what you're doing bud it's gonna pay off in the end don't worry man it, it just you, you just can't please all you just can't please everybody because everybody's got their own sets of opinions and triggers frankly i'm just fucking glad that we get a smash brothers on this type on this kind of magnitude so Fucking deal with it, neckbeards. Deal with it. Ooh. So this is a good one. This is a good one. Ah. <sighs> this is great. This is great. So, this is this talks about uh, freedom of speech right here and censorship. YouTube, you should take note. <coughs> Censor tube. Ubisoft recently censored certain visual elements in Rainbow Six Siege in order to comply with rules in certain Asian territories. Certain Asian territories. Not all, by the way. These changes were applied to all versions of the game, but following player backlash, the company has reversed course. Thank you, Ubisoft. Thank you. Don't forget our rights about censorship and shit. Oh, God. Don't make a baby version like that. Jesus. The visual changes that were introduced affected everything from icons to, to the multiplayer environments. Knife symbols used for melee kills became fists. Oh, Jesus Christ. His skull face was covered with a mask. Blood was removed from a wall. Even slot machines in a bar were pulled, leaving the counter blank. What the fuck, Ubisoft? You dumbasses. The game's community didn't take too kindly to the changes. Yeah, because what the fuck? That's like, that's... Com okay, hold on a second. On a competitive standpoint, why the fuck would you remove objects like that? Like, a, like, uh, what was it? Slot machines? What? What? You removed environments from a level that people probably use for competitive standpoints? For vantage points and shit? You don't, you don't fucking do that, you dummies! Others call the move cowardly, forcing players everywhere to have the same experience because not because of one region's regulars. Yeah, that's talk about being PC. That's political correctness on Ubisoft's part because they didn't want to offend somebody. Fucking babies. We spent the last week working on solutions and have decided that we were reverting all aesthetic changes. Jesus. The reversal will occur with the launch of Rainbow Six Siege's Operation Wind Bastion update, which is smart to do, and Ubisoft is working to assure that the operation... Alright, get off, cat. Get off. If you're... Pl uh, will begin with a little delay as possible. If you're playing in Asia, your experience should stay the same as other players, as Ubisoft isn't making more than one version. Okay, so... My big problem with that is that, like I said, they went political correctness style... They were afraid to they were afraid to offend some Asian territories, which I don't know which ones. Apparently, China. Like seriously, fuck you, China. Like seriously, fuck you guys. You guys are assholes with your trading and shit like that with America. You guys don't don't like to make it easy. Uh, you don't even like people playing video games in your goddamn country to begin with, because you're a bunch of commies anyway. So. Yeah, a place that's run, ran by a, a shitty Chinese government that just likes to have control of everything. Yeah, I'm glad Ubisoft finally grew the balls to not back down from that shit and have China just fucking deal with it and make them realize that censorship is ridiculous to have, especially on a grand scale like this. Like, holy crap, across all regions? Like, shit. What were they thinking, man? They weren't thinking. They were just being little wusses about it, little emotional teabags. So, yeah, I can imagine how upset people could really be about with that. I mean, that is just ridiculous. Because the game becomes more bare bones and less fun. People like the violence. People like having that stuff in there. They like the added colors. They like the type of aggressive, not aggressive, but th that type of, you know, aesthetic look. It's an M-rated game. You just change it to a T-rated game. I mean, Jesus criminy. I mean... Oh, isn't it enough that you're shooting people in the face? Yeah, but we wanted to be realistic because we're sick fuckers like that. There's nothing wrong with it. I like to have a pretty re realistic experience. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you could say that about anything. Would I want to watch, like, th that's like having where, you know, football players have to wear pillows inside of their, uh, just some really super comfy pillow type armor. And they tackle each other and then the screen, and then they turn off the, they, they, they censor that. They like cover it up with like a black sp spot on the screen or something, or they just cut away from the tackle. That's basically what that shit does. You just take away from the core game. 
And then, yeah, and then, like, removing some environmental stuff, that's like taking, like, benches away in, in a football game on the sideline or cheerleaders, like some bullshit like that. You just don't do that. Jeez. <coughs> so, okay, Ubisoft, don't be stupid like that again. Like, that's how you make people not want to play your game anymore. You guys had a rocky launch from the beginning. I don't have I don't have a shitty end, okay? That's just crazy. It's just crazy. Uh, my, my good friend Dayton Knows Gaming was talking about how much bullshit it was because, you know, Chinese people are just a bunch of fucking cowards that just want to just control everything and make people feel bad for their shitty government. Well, fuck that, China. We're not dealing with that with that type of bullshit. So good job, Ubisoft, for for finally getting the courage to stand up to those bullies. So good job. You know what? If China wants to ban Rainbow Six Siege, that's not our problem. That's their fucking problem. Why should we suffer, right? That type of thing. Why should, why should I have to deal with so because someone else is fucking offended by that shit? Yeah. Anyway, censorship happens for people that can't handle the truth of reality and aggressive behavior anything that's above and beyond they're called pussies so yeah i hope you remember that i hope i hope anybody who's got offended by that i hope you feel it right here in whatever heart that you have whatever you know and no offense to any of my friends that i have <laughs> anyway all right so this is the uh the dumbest thing i've ever seen in my entire life you ready for this shit <laughs> Yep, there is a Monster Hunter movie because, oh, look at that. We asked for that, didn't we? <laughs> Yay, another Capcom with Mila Jolovich. Oh, boy. That means we're going to get another fucking slog, slog fest of shitty video game movies like Resident Evil, which the first one was the only decent one. <sighs> Capcom, why would you even allow this shit? Anyway... Yeah, you can just see a little sneak peek picture of it up there, and it looks like fucking... Oh, God. Just stop. Just stop. First of all, why show a desert? This isn't Transformers 2. God damn it. This shows stuff that people can relate to. All right. Uh, it's filming in South Africa. Behold this brand new exclusive photo from Monster Hunter Screen Gems upcoming live. Okay, the image below. That shows Mila Jovovich. She just loves making shit films, apparently. Easy cash grabs because she's a sellout. Just kidding. <coughs> it's a bit of a sellout. A bit of it. Heroine Natalie Artemis, an original character not from the games in Tony Jaw. Yay, retcon. Well, and, and to be honest, I, the Monster Hunter doesn't really have that much of a story, so who gives a fuck at this point? Monsters, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, jaw blade, a type of great sword. Okay, so um, in a phone interview from the set in South Africa, Monster Hunter director, oh, Paul Anderson, no! God damn it. Paul Anderson made all the fucking shit Resident Evil movies. God, and of course he's gonna put his wife in the movie because he's fucking beta cucked as shit. The beauty of the costumes and the landscape for the Monster Hunter game really kind of came out in that image. Are you, are you serious? Are you fucking serious, Paul Anderson? Are you a dumbass? <coughs> okay. Let me reread this statement. The beauty of the costumes and the landscapes from the Monster Hunter game. Okay, so he didn't even say it right. Game? You mean franchise, you idiot. So obviously, he doesn't fucking play the game or know shit about it. He watched one screenshot. He's like, I know it. They help monsters. That's how you do it, right? Really kind of came really kind of came out in that image. Really kind of came out. So it didn't really. It actually that's just you coming up with an excuse to say how shitty it is. So, I'll show you the image now. So please let me know how monster how this looks like Monster Hunter. Please. This is just two people wearing cosplay costumes in a desert. No monsters, no hub. Nope, no nope, uh, palicos, nothing. Just wearing costumes. Jesus fucking Christ. You guys are so gonna ruin that game's image. Oh, here's another quote. She is the game, the game player in which she is the... I can't even finish the sentence. 
She's the audience's avatar. Their way into the world. Really? Really? Well, this image definitely does not fucking help at all. Oh, he's chosen for his resemblance to the wild spiraways from the games. I can't. I just can't. Well, why don't you show something better than a fucking sand dune? It's not... It's not just sand dunes. There's rocky environments everywhere. Spires. There's barely any desert, really. Like, flatlands. It's have you played Monster Hunter World? You should check it out. All right, so um, yeah, uh, I'm I'm done talking about it. The movie's gonna be shit. It's gonna be shit. You know it's gonna be shit. We've seen Paul Anderson's track record. It's gonna be shit. The evidence is just beyond me. Anyway, let's move on to the last one. So. <coughs> Excuse me. Getting really congested all of a sudden. All right. So this is something that I'm excited about, but many people think it's uh, Kingdom Hearts is just the worst thing ever. I like Kingdom Hearts a lot. I like Disney. I like Squaresoft. I, whatever. It's fine. So they finally finished development. That was a quick 13 years and change, wasn't it? Oh, God. I'm proud to have built an, ex an extended version of the trailer to been played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, it, in it, Kingdom Hearts 3 protagonist Sora Donald can more teaming up with facing off against other characters. Alright. So, yeah, the game is done. It's it's hit gold status. Um, that's great. Fantastic. I'm stoked to get this game. This game is going to be a ton of fun. I know they put a lot of time and work into it. Um, just like they did with Final Fantasy 15. So these were... These were two games that took forever, over 10 years to come out. Kingdom Hearts 3 and Final Fantasy 15. Those games took forever. Forever! <coughs> so, after this, what comes after Kingdom Hearts 3? The Final Fantasy 7 remake that we haven't seen for like three years. Or close to it. So, once Square Enix gets all those big projects out of the way, they can finally sleep at night. God, like, all these games have been in development hell. It's ridiculous. But I'm going to be getting the game. The game looks fantastic. I hate how many different types of worlds they keep showing in new footage. They're spoiling the game way too much. But don't worry, I haven't been watching any of the new stuff, really, because I like to be surprised in where you go, despite the internet being obnoxious about it. Because, like, their, their marketing campaign this time around is complete ass. Uh, because if you remember in the first game, their whole pl the the commercial was like uh, you'll never know who you run into next or where you're gonna go. Like that was the slogan. Now it's just like you'll know where you run into next, fuckers. Take that, shitheads. And I'm like, stop, guys. This is what made Kingdom Hearts so cool back in the day because we didn't know what worlds we were gonna go to next. Stop. So I don't even I don't even care if they if. If there's some worlds they haven't shown, but they need to stop fucking showing it. The only thing I have a big deal about this game is that there's no Squaresoft characters anymore. There's no Square Enix characters anymore, and I don't understand why. The director said, we don't need them anymore. Are you shitting me? So, like, why did you even put them in the first two games? Oh, we needed them because... Oh, his excuse was, well, we needed some way to attract the uh, the audience. They're so like, oh, Final Fantasy characters, that's cool. Uh, it's a good, like, good bait and switch thing. Basically, it was clickbait. It was literally clickbait. And I, I, I hate the director for that. And now he's not clickbaiting anymore, luckily. But it was a pretty douchey move to do. And I wish there were Squaresoft characters in there still. Because it'd be nice to see some new faces from the games that have come out. It's been 13 and a half fucking years why would we not want to see the new Squaresoft characters? Anyway, so, stuff like that. Questions like that, whatever. So, I hope you all did enjoy the Nico show for today. I have been your host, Nico the Legend. And let me just tell you, uh, we were actually supposed to have a two-hour special today. But, seeing that I didn't reach 400 subscribers in the past weekend, I just needed two more. Yeah, really pathetic. But, when we do reach it, my plan was to have... A two-hour Nico show special and then doing an eight-hour stream of a game of um, 
Are you going to do an eight an hour, eight hour stream of a game of your guys' choice? I don't know. But and then a thank you video. But anyway, you know, I was just going to do one anyway. Why not? So thanks you guys for uh, sticking around. If you did, I uh, appreciate it. Uh, leave your thoughts, comments below in the video. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, follow me on follow me on Twitch, YouTube, and Discord. And I uh, hope to see you guys again. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm gonna do I'm, I'm gonna try to do a long Dragon Quest stream today. I'm gonna do it. <clears throat> I'm gonna do it. I, I gotta beat. I gotta get the true ending for that game. I'll feel a fuck ton better. All right. Anyway, thanks.